Now let's look at the LCD display. This is the uh, display on your little board. It's got a little microprocessor on the back, a bunch of pins on the top, and plugs right into the top of your board, like so. I like to write a program that says, hello world, like what I always do, on the display, have a display account, and then eventually get to building a binary clock with the display being on the output in the LCD. Now the LCD is a little bit more complicated. There's actually a processor on the LCD that you have to talk to. So you need a couple of files to drive it. To do that, I'm going to first create a folder. Called LCD Clock. Then go on Bison Academy. And take an LCD routine like this guy. This is a zip file. Inside the zip file are two other files. One is the LCD Port D program. That's got the drivers for the LCD display. I'll talk about it in just a sec. And the other one is the main routine. So let's copy those into the directory I just created. Now we'll go to MPLAB. And do a new project for the display. So again, do new project. 18 series pick, 18F4620, doesn't matter, C compiler, uh, this will be located under the LCD clock, Now if I go back to the files I just created, here it is. If I do the LCD port D.C, that includes a couple of routines. Uh, to drive the LCD, I need to keep track of time. So this is a weight routine that waits roughly one millisecond. By trial and error with an oscilloscope, counting to 618 waits about one millisecond. These are the LCD routines. The pause waits about two microseconds. Strobe pulses the clock line high and low, so there's the clock going high and low, with the high time being two microseconds that the LCD needs. LCD instruction, port D pin 2 is connected to the LCD. Port D drives the LCD display, so you're going to see port D flashing. D2 tells you whether the data that you're sending is an instruction, such as clear, or data, so just write the letter A. Um, LCD move, tells you where to move on the display. LCD write sends data, like the letter A. And the last routine, is when we really need, is the instruction, the LCD initialize. To get the LCD to turn on, you have to send it the command 3332280E0106. That's the data sheets on the LCD display. What we care about is that once you get this routine working, as long as it works, we'll just keep on calling it. These will get saved in our main directory. The LCD demo is the calling routine. So let's go into MPLAB X under source files. Let's add existing item. Find the right file under my documents. Uh, da, 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 376 LCD clock. LCD demo. Okay, so here's the bare bones program. I'm just going to make port A, B, C, D all output. Move to row 0, column 0, and then just display 0 through 20. I'm also going to go to row 1, column 0, and display 0 through 20, offset by 48. Again, you need to make sure your code is offset by 800 for the bootloader. So go under linker, additional options, offset 800. Compile and download.
transfer, send text file. To figure out what that is. It's under my documents, LCD clock, clock.x distribution, default, production. Here's the hex file. Okay, that didn't work because I forgot to initialize the LCD. If you don't initialize it, it's not set up to receive data. So including that, downloading it. What results in this program? Okay, trying that again. This is what it results in. The first row is sending 0 through 20. The second row is offset by 48. Note that the numbers 0 through 9 are, have to be offset by 48. The reason for that is the display uses ASCII. The ASCII table, go to ASCIItable.com, shows what the number is and what displays. And you would think that 0 through 9 would display the number 0 through 9. Well, it doesn't. To get the number 0 through 9, you have to display the numbers 48 through 57. A through F is 65, and so on. Uh, why the ASCII table is this way, I have no idea, but it's standard, and we're stuck with the standard. If you want to send a message, that can be done like so. Move to row 0, column 0, then send an E, C, E, space, 3, 7, 6. Now what you get is starting from row 0, column 0, ECE 376. A slightly more elegant way to do that is as following. Create a constant array that has the message I want to send, LCD clock, ECE 376. Then down in the main routine, I will move to row 0, column 0, and send each element of that array one by one. This will send out whatever I had in that previous array, LCD clock, followed by ECE 376, a little bit neater. Finally, let's look at how to send a number to the display. To do that, here's a subroutine called LCD out. I send it an integer, a number between 0 and 65,000, along with the character n, that's something decimal spaces I wanted to display. What I first do is take that number and pull off the digits one by one. I take a number like 1, 2, 3, 4, mod 10, that pulls off the ones digit. Divide by 10 mod 10 pulls off the tens digit. Divide by 10 mod 10 pulls off the hundreds, and so on. Pull off each digit one by one. So a of 0 is the ones, a of 1 is the tens, a of 2 is the hundreds digit. Then I display each digit one by one, offset by 48 for ASCII 0. That will display the number 1, 2, 3, 4 as 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll also throw in a decimal point to make it look like a fraction. So if I send the number 1, 2, 3, 4, comma 2, what's displayed is the number 0, 1, 2, decimal point 3, 4. I have two decimal points in there. So let's do that to display time in seconds with a resolution of 0.1 second. So here's one way to build a binary clock using LCD display, or actually analog clock. Um, I'm just going to count increment seconds. Seconds actually keeps track of time in tenths of seconds. When I get to 60 seconds would be 600 tenths of a second. I'll reset seconds to zero, increment minutes, then display the minutes, semicolon, and seconds. This is ASCII for semicolon, in case you forgot what it is. I'm displaying seconds to one decimal point. What that looks like is as follows. These are supposed to be seconds and minutes, and it gets to 60 minutes increments. It's running a little bit too fast. I need to throw in a wait loop to have it wait 100 milliseconds. So if we go back over here, and wait 100 milliseconds, then when it's done, I'm now roughly waiting 100 milliseconds per count. Actually, the timing's a little bit off. This is running a little bit too slow. The reason being, it should take 100 milliseconds for this line of code. The rest of the code takes a little bit of time as well. To see how long that takes, we would use an oscilloscope. Let's create an IO pin that we're not using. 
and we're going to pulse RA0 high and low. It goes high at the start of this routine, zero afterwards. If you look at chord A from zero on the oscilloscope, what you should see is the pin goes high when I call the weight routine. It should stay high for about 100 milliseconds if you have the weight routine working correctly. It goes low for all the rest of the code. That's about 13 milliseconds. What's happening is all this code takes some time to execute at 13 milliseconds. To have this clock correct, to be running one count every 100 milliseconds, I need to change it so that this is 13 milliseconds, I'm stuck with that. The remainder is my weight loop. I need to kill 87 milliseconds with the remainder of 100 to make the timing right. With that, you should be able to get a binary clock to work. Having a count in terms of tenths of seconds, seconds, and minutes.